how to learn origins and insertion for any muscle. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and a warm welcome to today's tutorial, which I'm actually really excited to bring you today because this is an area that pretty much everyone gets stuck on when they're doing their anatomy revision or if you've got a particular exam relating just to muscles, this again is something that will often be asked or also be an awkward part of your revision. So that's what we're gonna help with today. But memorizing muscle origins and insertions can feel like an impossible task and it doesn't have to be. That's what we're here for today. I've got five steps for you and you can learn them efficiently and actually understand how the muscle works in movement. And this is going to be a game changer for your recall and for being able to understand each of those muscles in much more depth. So let's um, head on in and see what the common mistakes are that people make when they're learning muscles. See if you can recognize a few of these yourself. There are three common mistakes uh, when learning origins and insertions. The first is that people aim to memorize words on a page rather than a physical muscle. This is so important and I see it so often. They get given a physical manual from their training provider or they look inside a book and it's literally a table of words and it's just um, details of the origin, detail of the insertion. That could be in very big detail, so quite advanced terminology whereby there's bony landmarks to understand. Or even if it's simplified, it's still a lot of bony landmarks to remember as the origin insertion point. Plus then you've got the name of the actual muscle itself and it becomes just a lot of words that you don't really understand that you're trying to remember wrote like word for word. So instead of memorizing them word for word on a page and applying that to not just one muscle, but up to 50 muscles for the level three anatomy, if you're doing something that's outside fitness, you might have hundreds of muscles you need to learn. This means that it's very important that you don't make that mistake. You will not memorize by learning it word for word. Mistake number two is learning lots of muscles all at once. That could be 37 muscles for level two anatomy and physiology, 50 for level three anatomy, or if you're doing nursing or a doctorate, you're gonna have hundreds that you need to learn. You cannot learn them all at once. And if you try to, all of those different origins and insertions are gonna get all mixed up in your brain and you're gonna end up not really understanding exactly where they are or what they do. And it's gonna be much harder to recall that. So you wanna spread it out over a longer period of time. Mistake number three is expecting perfect recall immediately. I lost track of how many times I've heard this. So if someone goes, I've, I've learned a couple of muscles, so I, I learned one or two and I, I, that was brilliant. And then I went to bed, I woke up in the morning and I expected myself to know it all immediately. But they don't necessarily test themselves in an exam based scenario of a mock question or a multiple choice or something with context. Instead, they end up testing themselves on what can I remember about that muscle, which is so open ended. Your brain doesn't have the context to pull on for that recall. And that means that you feel like a failure and you stop and you go, I can't do it. And you end up in this downward spiral of I'm not going to learn muscles. So we're going to avoid these mistakes. And we're going to get the most out of your muscle memory with these five step process. And this is what we use when we teach um, how to learn muscles inside parallel coaching. This is what we particularly look at these five steps. And these will address those common mistakes as well. So this the step number one is to take time. You want to schedule 15 minute revision bouts throughout your week. Make space in your diary for one slot per muscle. Notice that's a good amount of time for staring at one image of a muscle rather than trying to learn everything or all 50 muscles in an hour. <laughs> Don't. Just 15 minutes per muscle you need to learn. So let's say you've got 50 muscles. That's going to be 50 different 15 minute revision bouts. Now you could chunk those a bit differently. So instead of the quadriceps being four different muscles, it'll actually only take you one revision bout. So just one lot of 15 minutes rather than an hour, because a lot of them overlap and the context of one will help you learn the other. So you could put that in groups instead of individual muscles. Step number two is to look at the image and name. So you need to have a flashcard or something that's got a very good image of that muscle where you can clearly see the origin insertion. 
but you need to be able to see this image and come back to it often. Um, that could be printed out physically or it could be something that is digital on your phone, for example. But you want to associate the image to the name of that muscle. And the more that you can re repeat just these two things together, that in itself will make a huge difference. If you're looking at that one image with the name, you're already making that association, which is very, very valuable. Step number three is to use your own words. So in your own words, describe the location of that muscle. So look at it and go, okay, it goes from that bony bit on the hip to this bony bit on the knee, or like, where is it? For example, you might say the three hamstrings start at the pelvis or they start on your sits bone. So you can kind of break it down in your own words. And that is where the learning begins. Learning is so much easier when you relate it to something that you already know. If you try and use words you don't know, again, you go back to that memorizing word by word, rather than saying, oh, I know there's three hamstrings and they all start on my six bones. I'm sat on my six bones now and I can feel that. Oh, that's where my three hamstrings are. Immediately, you'll remember that because it's on your own body and it's in your own words. And I promise you, your recall will be much better. Step number four is fibre direction. This will help as well because you're not just remembering words again, you're looking and analysing the muscle itself. So look at the direction of the muscle fibre. This is the lines that go down that muscle as this will help you understand the joint action. But also those lines of fibre will run from origin to insertion. So you're able to then pinpoint that that line must mean that the origin is at one end of it and the insertion's at the other end of it. Sometimes muscles will have multiple origins or multiple insertions and will appear less straightforward. But if that's the case, it will create like a fan shape of the fiber direction, like the pec, for example, the pec major. You can kind of see the line of fiber going all the way across from multiple origins to one insertion. So you end up giving you this nice fiber direction, which immediately a question in your exam, you could guess that the origin is going to be somewhere around the sternum, or around the clavicle. You could guess that based on your own knowledge and you could guess the insertion somewhere on the humerus. So then it's just a case of breaking down which of the answers are relevant to your guess that you created. So that'll help. Then step number five is joint actions. Visualize the muscle concentrically, contracting. So this is basically the origin of the, the origin and the insertion getting closer together. So as the fibers are getting shorter, visualize that muscle starting to contract or physically do it, which is doing an exercise or a joint action. And this will help retain that information in your head. So on the hamstring, you'll be like, oh, OK, yeah, hip extension and also knee flexion and doing those regularly so you can feel it and you can see it. Then layering all that on with your origin insertion will make a massive difference. But if you think about that as a 15 minute chunk, it's just those four steps, isn't it? Image and name in your own words for origin insertion. Then you can layer on the fancy words after fiber direction, joint actions, job done. Then you go on to the next um, the next muscle. If you finish that one early, just spend time repeating it and going back over it. But that will make a huge difference to your studies. Let's have an example. Um, I just picked the quadriceps vastus lateralis for this one. Um, just one of the quadricep muscles, because I thought it's kind of like nice and easy to show you. But this is one of our flashcards is what they look like. So first of all, you go, well, here's the name vastus lateralis. And here's the image. So you can start relating those two things together. Then you would say it in your own words. So you're like, well, actually, that's that bony bit of the femur as it comes out to the side. You might know that's called the greater trochanter. You might not. So the bony bit on the side of the hip <laughs> as the femur goes out to the side is the origin point. So it's somewhere quite up high on the femur. Then you know the insertion is going down via the patella tendon onto the tibia. So you're like, actually, OK, I can see that that is down on the shin bone. It crosses the knee, but it's going via the patella tendon. So then when you look at the origin insertion, you're like, ah, oh, that makes sense. That's exactly what I said. It's on the upper femur and it's the front of the tibia via the patella tendon. So you can confirm to yourself that that's where it is. Maybe you're... Um, the thing that you need is a little bit more detailed and it would say exactly where that origin insertion is or maybe there's a particular bony landmark you need to mention but that's okay you can layer those on next 
Then you can think about the muscle action. So if the, this origin and insertion get closer together, if you look at the origin at the top and the insertion at the bottom, and we've got these two different color crosses on there, with this origin and insertion, if they get closer together, and you can see the line of fiber running between that origin and insertion vertically, if they get closer together, then we're gonna have knee extension. So there's no, it's not crossing the hip, so there can't be any hip action, but it is crossing the knee, so there can be knee action. And we know it's gonna be extension, so it's, it's straightening out the leg. And the primary plane of movement is sagittal. We've thrown that in for your reference as well. And then an exercise example would be something like the leg extension machine, for example. Now note, the bulk of the muscle is on the outside of the femur, and you can kind of see that here for vastus lateralis. And lateral, the phrase lateral, as in in lateralis, is furthest from the midline. If it said medial or medialis, then it would be on the inside and it would be the vastus medialis and it'd be on the inside of the leg closest to the midline, but it's furthest from it, so it's on the side with the little toe, it's lateral. And that's a way of helping you remember the name and the muscle together. So this is a typical kind of flashcard that you would see from our, our muscle memory flashcards that we do, but you can make these yourself if you want, whereby you literally have a good image, work around each of these steps that we've gone through so far and you'll be well away. So let's go back and just go over those steps one last time. Take your time for your chunks, schedule your 15 minute slots, which we took less than that to go through that vastus lateralis then. Image and name, then in your own words, fiber direction and joint actions. You might go and do a few exercises in the gym to confirm it. And that brings us to understanding all of those muscles together is really key. And remember, you've got to chunk it down into little pieces. Don't make one of those mistakes whereby you try and learn everything all at once. And repetition is key as well. So the more that you can come back and have a look at the imagery, the better. We do something called the muscle memory flashcards. We have them for level two anatomy where there's less flashcards and level three where it's got all 50 muscles inside there. Now, the muscle memory flashcards are digital. So when you access them, you get them in a login area and you can download them from there. Now, when you download them, you can choose to print them. Like you can see some people put them on the back of the toilet door or all over their kitchen cupboards or turn them into a little booklet. But they're, they're handy for something physical. But you don't have to wait for shipping because they're digital. So that means that you can then arrange to get them printed if you want to. Then inside the, uh, as part of that, you can see, like, you can also leave them digital and they will look very much like what you just saw on screen for that vastus lateralis. Here's one for the group of muscle of the quadriceps. Um, you can just see uh, the black header on there. That's what that flashcard looks like. Really clear, nice and easy to see. And there's different ones for different uh, exams you might be taking. So if you are interested in the muscle memory flashcards, I'll make sure there is a link underneath this video. But most importantly, don't do those common mistakes of expecting your recall to be perfect, of trying to learn all the muscles at the same time and trying to remember the muscles word for word because it just won't stick. So I hope this has been helpful. Please do drop a little comment below with what your big takeaway has been from today. And I look forward to seeing you on any future videos you might join us on. Remember to hit subscribe. And also, if you want those muscle memory flashcards, check out the links that are alongside the video and also in the comments. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.